<laughs> oh, hey guys. How's everybody doing? This is VR, virtual reality. Isn't that amazing? Virtual reality. You know that people, uh, they found out that, uh, well, what, well, let me explain virtual reality before I get started. There is a lot of stuff going on in this particular area. It's locked into a computer, and it's like, it's like a reality. And you go into it, and your whole body's involved. And though it's, you're not moving anywhere, you're actually moving within the virtual reality. And you do things with your body, and it reacts to what's going on. As a matter of fact, VR has been used for people who, who are suffering from paralyzed uh, uh, issues and situations where they can't use their limbs, but they put these things on and they look down and their, are, their legs are working and their feet are working. And as they see it, the brain says, hey, it's working. And it tricks the brain to actually revive damaged tissues or nerves that have been, been kind of uh, sleeping it wakes them up because the body, the mind sees something and it reacts to the reality that it's seeing. Where the body follows what the mind is seeing. And as they see their legs working, all of a sudden they begin to feel t tingles and muscles begin to wake up. And it's proven that VA virtual re or VR, virtual reality, is actually helping bring healing to people's bodies. Isn't that cool? Now, here's the thing, y'all. We've been given the power of spirit life. And it is possible, as you understand the power of spirit life, that your body reacts to what you see as truth in your life. And the more that you understand spirit life, all of a sudden your body begins to function at a different level because you start seeing things differently. And as you see things by the spirit, your natural life changes. And there's always this conflict. There's always this conflict by the spirit or by the flesh. Now, Jesus said this was, this was a vapor of time that we had together, a vapor of time. But there's an eternity of time that we're a part of. And it is possible to get eternal truth to function in temporal life. Come on, church. Yeah. Right. And that's what I want to talk about. Since we've been talking about spirit, that we are people of spirit. And because we're people of spirit, we have been given this wonderful ability to see things differently. But it's your choice. Does that make sense, church? You could, you could basically say, well, my life revolves around what I can see. And if that's true, you're going to miss out a lot because, because spirit is about what you believe. There's more power by the spirit than by what you see. And Jesus would all the time go in and out from natural life to supernatural life. Give me those loaves and fishes. Let me pray over it and see it differently in the spirit. And it produced in the natural so what I'm going to share with you is what I see in Scripture as a vital part of our spirit life, our spirit life. But there's always a conflict between natural world and spirit world. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 2.12, it says, and we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit. When you receive Jesus, you receive God's spirit within you so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given to us. What, this is a possibility. What God knows, you know. I just, Jesus prayed this prayer in John 17. He said, Lord, that they may be one like you and I are one. Now, do you think God would hear Jesus' prayer? Absolutely. Yeah, I think so. I think he might hear. So it was in the heartbeat of our Savior, of our Messiah, that your relationship with your Father would be as deep as his was. And whatever Jesus knew, God allowed him to know it. It is possible you carry the very spirit of God within you. What do you think, church? And what, is it, what if you could actually put on your spirit goggles and see things differently? And your body would respond differently. And your reality would change differently. He says that there's a conflict, that, that we've been given this, this wonderful spirit and given to us freely by God. Verse 14, but people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's spirit. It all sounds foolish to them, and they can't understand they can't understand it, for only those who are spiritual can understand what the Spirit means. So, as we walk in life, people will look at you and say, hey, man, that sounds really dorky, what you're talking about, God and all that stuff. They're fulfilling Scripture. Of course, it looks foolish to the natural man. Of course, it does. Remember, the power of God fell in Acts 2. Some heard and saw, and they said, man, we hear them speak the wonderful works of God. And others said, ah, oh, they're just drunk. 
right? So you walking by the Spirit, you may look different than the world. Yeah, you, you would. You would be. But there's something beautiful about it. At the end of chapter 2 of Acts, it says they were filled with the Spirit, and they found favor with God and man. They walked in favor. They walked in grace with everybody. You walking in the Spirit shouldn't separate you. You walking in the Spirit should make you a blessing everywhere you go. In the darkness or in the light, that you bring light everywhere you go. This is what you've been designed to be, y'all. And, and so uh, I, growing up in a Pentecostal background, the Spirit of God was kind of scary to me. You had Sister Gloria over here who, when she got hit with the Spirit, hi! Uh, she started running pews or, you know, jumping pews or running the aisle. And then they call it, she's been hit by the Holy Ghost. And I thought, man, it's a ghost. <laughs> We got a ghost in the house, man. What are you going to do with that? And so this idea of the Holy Ghost and, the, and that it makes you do stuff, and I'm kind of going, and I got saved. And I thought, well, I, you know, and in my denomination, and maybe it wasn't taught this way, but it was caught this way. It was like in order to be really spiritual, you got to check the box and receive the Holy Spirit. You got to speak in tongues. And so it's like, really, God, I got to speak in tongues. I don't get it. Okay. So I'd go up, you know, and I'd see all the Sister Glorias and stuff. That means Gloria, Gloria, that's her name. I read Spanish church. And so anyway, so they're, they're, they're getting hit and stuff, and I'm going, okay, Lord, uh, it's, they say I got to have this. So I'd go up. I said, okay, I'm going to get, you know, anybody want to receive the Holy Spirit? So I'd go up there, and, I'd, you know, I'm thinking, man, the Holy Ghost is scary, man. But okay, it's what's part of the deal, man. So, okay, I'm here. And they lay hands on me, and they would, and I, and they would like, you know, receive the Holy Ghost. And I, and, and, and I, and I didn't get it, and I'd go, whew, that was close. <laughs> I had a distorted view of what the Holy Spirit was. And the more that I went, I would go, man, that was close. I went, and the more, and the more that I, I, I began to draw unto the Lord, a hunger was created in me to where I don't even care anymore, God. I want all of you. And if this makes, whatever that is, I don't care anymore. Y'all, the people in the upper room were not looking for tongues. They were looking for him. They were just pursuing the heartbeat of God and the power of the Holy Spirit fell and they spoke with other tongues. So I'm going to be talking about that today, but I, I want to get away from the event. We made it in my church an event. It's a person and there's also a function. It's a gift if you want to receive it. And most of us don't want to receive something because we don't understand it. You don't understand. So, so even though it's available to you, and here's the thing, if you don't speak with tongues, that's no big deal. You're, you're filled with the Spirit of Jesus already, but it's a baptism, and it's a gift for you if you want it or not. I'm just saying, the more you draw closer to God, you're going to get to a place where it doesn't even matter anymore. God, whatever you are, I want all that you have for me. And it's a baptism, a complete dunking in. Everything else is out. I'm in Jesus, and the Holy Spirit's there with me, and I, I'm just going to... Utilize this wonderful gift. Now, in your notes, if you're on Realm, and if you don't know how to get on Realm, please uh, tap someone in the lobby, they'll, uh, Connie or Kim, and they'll tell you how to get to Realm. That's where all my notes are. And on my notes, in my notes today, I, I, I put a link to a study that, was, that they had several years ago. Don't go to it now, and don't watch it now either. Uh, <laughs> but in this link, um, professional doctors of psychology and doctors take people who pray and who also pray in the Spirit, in their prayer language. The, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a, is a great thing. We, we are a church that believes in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and we are a church that believes in things of the Spirit, but we don't magnify it above everything else. And Acts, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 13, Paul brings a correction how people were magnifying the gifts above loving each other. So it, it can get distracted, but it was always meant to be a gift and a gift to help you. And so, so uh, in this study, uh, doctors got together and they, 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 uh, they put people in, in, in certain situations where they, can, they could, you know, gauge what the brain is doing under certain influences. So they brought in some monks and they began to chant and they looked at the brain and the brain saw what, the part of the brain that deals with language and reason was active as the monks began to chant. They brought in some nuns, and they began to go through their prayer list. And, and again, they saw the brain. The brain, the part of the brain that deals with reason and logic was also active. Then they brought some, someone in, and they said, would you, you know, just pray? So he began to pray, just like normal. Father, we love you. We thank you. Thank you for your grace. And then he said, now, would you please pray in the Spirit? So he began to pray in tongues. And this is what they found out. And again, look at this study. It's wonderful. In this study, they found the part of the brain that deals with reason and logic, language, was not active. 
that there was a peace. It was peaceful. That when you pray, and when this, and this is the documented thing. Y'all, I didn't make this stuff up. This is science. The part of the brain that deals with logic and language is not active when you begin to pray in the spirit, when you pray in your prayer language. Isn't that the coolest thing in the world? That means when you get hit with stuff and you don't know what to do and your mind's racing 100 miles an hour, we've been given the ability to pray in tongues and find peace. And not only peace, let me show you what it does for us here in Romans 8, 26. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know how, what God wants us to pray for. Those moments where you're hit with, I don't know, how do I pray? God, what do I do? That's what he says. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. The Holy Spirit is praying through you with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. That's tongues. That's praying in the Spirit. And then verse 27, and the Father who knows our all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. Church, I'm going through a struggle. I, I, I get caught up with, I could do this. I get that whole yellow pad. Remember before there was an iPad, there was a yellow pad. And we used to just put our ideas and stuff. When you can't figure it out, you have this ability to pray in tongues, pray in the Spirit. Your mind is silent. Your spirit is groaning. Your spirit is presenting truth. Your spirit is lining up with God's will. And then it gives you the revelation of how to pray. I'll pray in the spirit. I'll pray with understanding. And this is a wonderful gift, church. I'm not making this stuff up. This is what it says, right? Verse 27 again. And the father who knows all hearts knows what the spirit is saying. And the spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And then verse 28 and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and called according to his purposes for them. We throw that scripture out a lot and we don't realize in context, it's when you get a spiritual perspective, when you stop and begin to pray in the spirit, then you get the peace of God that says, hey, it's all going to work out just fine. All things work together by the spirit, church. Everyone say, by the spirit. It's how we live. And in this world, the conflict to magnify what's going on in the natural and what's going on in the spirit, it'll be our conflict all the time. And realize you've been given a gift. You've been giving, given this wonderful promise of the Holy Spirit to pray in the spirit, be still, and hear from the Lord. His will lines up with the will of God for your life, and you speak. Isn't that cool? I want some of that. How about y'all? That, of course we do. So uh, along with that, uh, I, want to, I want to look at 1 Corinthians 12.4. It talks about gifts. It says here, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. The word gift, there are diversities of divine grace. That's what gift translates, to grace. So if you're looking for grace, there are diversities of divine grace. And they're all manifested in these gifts we've been given. So there are diversities of divine grace, but the same spirit. And the word spirit translates to current, a current of air or breath, which implies intimacy. So when you begin to pray in the spirit, the grace of God is available to you in different capacities, and you get to flow into his current, which leads you straight into intimacy with him. And you hear his whisper. That's what it means by breath. It's meant to be that close. It's meant to be something that you develop with your father, that you know his whisper, you know his gaze, and he guides your life with diversities of grace. What do you think, church? I think that's awesome. And it goes on to say in verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. And I want to make sure we understand this. For the manifestation, the word manifestation translates to bestowment or declaration. The declaration, the expression of God's grace over your life, the declaration of a gift in your life, a grace aspect, a divine grace is given to you, to each one for the profit of all. You're, the way you walk the best is when you operate in your gift and you're able to share it for somebody else, not for you. And it's really important. This is chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians and chapter 13. He's going to bring correction where people have elevated the gift above their character, above, uh, well, basically they've elevated the gift for themselves. 
And here it says that every gift is given. Every aspect of grace is given for the edification of another, not the, the lifting up of you. When I was, uh, we first started the church back in 2009, I got a phone call. I don't know how they got a hold of me, but they got a phone call saying, hey, this is Prophet Bubba. I'm prophet. He said, uh, I was praying. The Lord told me I'm supposed to be your prophet, and, uh, which means I need, to, I need to get a salary. And I said, dude, I don't even know who you are. Bye. And I hung up, and I thought, you should have seen that coming. Come on, church, lighten up. So there are people, and that's why Paul brought correction in chapter 13, because what we do, we get so caught up with our gifts that we think, oh, look, I'm so gifted. No, you, you've been given a gift of grace, but it's for the profit of all, not for the profit of you. And, and no better way than to lay down your life, operate in this grace you've been given for others. And there's no better way to, to live than to share the gifts you've been given. So obviously, we want these gifts operating, Right. Now, and I'm going to focus in on the word of wisdom. Today, I'm talking about the word of wisdom. We've been talking about spirit for the last several weeks. I'm going to talk about the word of wisdom today. He says, for the profit of all, for one is given the word of wisdom. Now, the word of wisdom is a supernatural solutions to problems you're facing. I am facing a problem. I need a word of wisdom from the Lord to make the right decision. And Joseph is one of the best examples. We talked about Joseph a couple of weeks ago. There was a situation, the, the king had a dream, they couldn't interpret it, they brought in Joseph. Joseph had a gift of interpreting dreams, and, and so, uh, so he, he, he gives, the, gives the, the, the interpretation of the dream, and then the Spirit of God hits him, because the Pharaoh later says, there's nobody on the planet that has a Spirit of God like this guy. The Spirit of God hits him, and he lays out a plan for the next seven years. He looks into the future. The Holy Spirit gives him this word of wisdom to set up a process that will benefit the, the city, the state, the nation from here for the next seven years. God gives him this word of wisdom for the future to correct a problem that's coming. You know who the, there's, there's a primary group that needs the word of wisdom, and that's every businessman on the planet needs the word of wisdom. But we need the word of wisdom, church, each one of us. We face issues every single day. That you need a word from God, and it's been given. And, and I, I want to show, I, I want you to think about, again, we've been kind of taught, maybe caught again, that every gift was specifically for an individual. I, I'd like to, to maybe challenge that. I believe every gift, if it's a grace given, a gift, a divine grace, then I believe every divine grace is available to all. If you walk in the Spirit, you won't satisfy the lust of the flesh. You walking in the Spirit, whatever gift is needed, you have availed. It's available to you. You're in a situation and you say, someone needs healing. You say, hey, man, it'd be great to find someone that, that had the gift of healing. Oh, you have the name of Jesus. Lay hands and let's believe God. That's what I'm saying. See what I'm saying? And I believe every gift are for those that pursue God. If you walk in the Spirit, the Spirit of His grace is upon you. Accept it. Okay, so... Um, this idea of the word of wisdom. Now, you know, David, he fought Goliath, fought the giant, right? And he fought and he beat the giant, right? And the qualification that he said is, hey, listen, I've killed a lion and a bear, right? So you operating in the gifts that you have, they got to start somewhere. But before there was a lion and the bear, there was probably a gopher and a coyote. You got to start somewhere practicing the gifts in your life. And there's no place better than family. Than family. Uh, I grew up with my dad. My dad, Lino Juarez, uh, was an amazing man who could speak uh, prophetically, who saw things, who had words of wisdom in his life operating. And as a little boy, I, could, I would hang out with my dad, and he would say things and do things that would actually happen as, and he would tell me, we're about to go this, and let me see what's going to happen, blah, blah, blah. And it would just happen. I'm going, wow, God, that's awesome. I used my dad. And what that did for me was create an expectation of being led by the Spirit. Right? So, um, Tori, my perfect child. Uh, <laughs> no, Jen and Josh are okay, too. Anyway, uh, we had bought her an MP3 player when she was about 10 years old, and she lost it. And, and, we, and it was an expense. Back then, it was a really expensive little deal, and we bought it for her, and she couldn't find it for a couple of weeks. 
And we thought, man, um, and it was getting a little tense around the house. Where's your MP3 player, Tori? Uh, I can't find it. We spent money for that thing. I can't find it. <laughs> but you have to understand, if you walk into a room, you'd understand why she couldn't find it, but that's another issue altogether. So, um, so we're driving back from church one morning, and I said, babe, why are you so upset? She said, dad, I, I really, I cannot find the MP3 player. And I said, well, look, we're driving home. We'll be home in about 15 minutes. Let's just pray. Let's pray and believe God that he'll show you prophetically He'll show you with a word of wisdom, a, a, a solution will come as we pray and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you. It's a revelation of his spirit. So we prayed, and we may have prayed in tongues. I prayed, we prayed, and, we, and, 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 uh, and I said, now, now so we just prayed, Tori. We asked the Holy Spirit to show us. Let's be still and just wait, and the Holy Spirit's going to reveal it to you as we drive home. We're driving home, and she says, Dad, I think I know where it's at. I, I, I just saw where it was at. She gets home, she goes up, she goes exactly where the Holy Spirit showed it to her because we asked and she found it. Two weeks lost. How do you think from that moment on, this 10-year-old girl is going to think about God? What has been established in her for something so insignificant as an MP3 player that God of creation is concerned about what concerns her? Uh, you need to hear this, church. God of creation is concerned about what concerns you. And I don't care if it's an MP3 player. you got to start somewhere trusting God, but activating these gifts you have with you. They're in you. It's divine grace. It's part of who he is. So to create an expectation, you're one word away from changing your future by divine revelation. You're one word, a word from God. You're one word away from changing your future by divine revelation. And, and how do you get divine revelation? You believe you can't have it. It's a grace given to you. It's unmerited favor. It's because you know Jesus. And in Christ, you are complete, lacking nothing. It's an aspect. It's a gift to you from the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I have to go away, and you're going to receive this gift, the Holy Spirit. And... Part of the function of the Holy Spirit is to be a comforter. He also will tell you of things to come. Y'all, that's a gift given to you. And yes, absolutely. Our church believes in speaking in tongues. It's not our identifier. It's just part of the gifts of God. If you don't speak in tongues, no biggie. Don't sweat it. Don't pursue the gift. Like I said before, the people in the upper room were not pursuing tongues. They're pursuing the presence of God. You pursue the presence of God, everything else will work out. Just relax. What do you think, church? So you're one word away from a revel divine revelation. The Bible says in Isaiah 46, 10, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. God doesn't start from the beginning. He starts from the end to the beginning. You know what? He, he's not... He's not confined to the measure of time and space. He's God. He knows about the end because he's your future. He's already been in your future. And the God that we serve, we could ask him, Lord, what about this? And we go, let me, oh, let me help you with that. That's your father. Isn't that the coolest thing in the world? We serve a God, not only of your past being forgiven, but of your future being established. And he can pull you out of the future, pull stuff that you're going to need if you have an expectation of it. <sighs> what do you think? God is going to do what it, it's in his pleasure. It's his grace to give to you. Come on, church. This is good stuff. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, The secret things belong to the Lord, our God. And we say, yep, that's true. The secret things belong to the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, and they, that they may do all the words of the law. The law being fulfilled in your life is understanding it's being revealed to you daily. It's being revealed to you every second of the day. The secret things of God are being revealed to you. And you can listen. And if you're facing a, a situation you're not, you don't know what to do, you can stop. And you've been given this wonderful gift that absolutely stills your mind, allows you to line up with God's will and speak forth the will of God. 
And this wonderful gift is our prayer language. Our prayer language. And it creates an expectation that I'm not defined by what I see. I have another vantage point that I operate on. I, I, I see things by the Spirit. And I'm always at the ready. Y'all, I've been always, since, the, since hanging out with my dad, there was always an expectation of, but what does God have to say about it? No matter what I face, there's a, but, but God's with me, so favor is going to come to me. I, 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 something's going to happen. I, I'm going to be the one. It's just, I, that's the way I live. I live with an expectation of good things are coming my way because I know him. What if we live that way, church? And this idea of the, the, the truth of God, the secret things of God being revealed to us. And when they're revealed to you, how does it perpetuate from generation to generation? As your children see you operate in things of God, it, it creates an anticipation, an expectation of God life. Just like the other would. If all they see parents operate in fear and unbelief and distractions, and that is the, the manner of how they operate, then there's an expectation of fear, unbelief, and distraction. But if you operate out of the faith in God, the peace of God, and this could be changed overnight, the next day, the very next moment, you're hearing this right now, and it could say, huh, okay, God, I think I believe that. And everything changes because it's by faith. What do you think, church? Amen. So I wrote this down because I want to make sure I could say this right. My children have an expectation of the manifestation of the Spirit with the gift of the Word of Wisdom. They've seen their parents operate in the Word of Wisdom. Because they've seen it operate in the family dynamic that we have. Because Kim and I established an expectation of spirit life, our children have an expectation of spirit living. And their children have an expectation of spirit living. The culture of Jesus from generation to generation. Because we create an expectation. Just as so, just that it would be so if in your family dynamic, you've created an expectation of fear and unbelief. What do you think, church? And no condemnation. This is what's a sweet thing about God. It's a gift. You can receive it right now to say, and I'm not talking about just tongues, even though that's what I'm talking about right now. I'm talking about, let's start with, maybe I can be different. That's a great place. Let's do that for a while. Let's do that for a week. Maybe I can. Yes, you can. You've been given a new, you're a new creature in Christ. Maybe you just keep you going the old way because it's just because natural. That's the natural man. You, you, you got to put on the goggles. You're a person of spirit. That's really who you are. So I'm talking about something that Jesus made a big deal about. And I could quote you verses upon verses, but I'm going to only use two references. In Acts 1, Jesus tells the disciples, whatever you do, do not leave Jerusalem until you receive the promise. And then he says, this promise will give you power to be witnesses. And that really is what we are. We are witnesses on earth of a different kingdom. Everywhere you go, you are a witness of a different kingdom. Everything may be going terrible in the situation. When you walk in, God gives you the right word at the right time to make a difference in every place and everywhere you go. That's what God has designed you to be, the difference maker, by spirit. You're different and designed by God to be different. So Jesus makes this point, do not leave. Now think about this. The disciples have seen Jesus die on the cross, shed his blood, and resurrect They've gotten commands, go out and make disciples. But they say, oh, by the way, don't leave until you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it'll give you the power, the miracle power to be. And the next chapter opens up with this amazing phenomena of speaking in tongues. And I just explained to you the medical, if you look at that video, spend some time this afternoon, go look at that video. This wonderful gift of sealing, making your mind be still and hearing from heaven. Tongues. People have made it an event. It was meant to be a function, and it's a person. Receiving the person, and the gift is you can still your mind. Have wisdom from heaven come to you on a situation you're facing, and God will be there for you. What do you think, church? This is his word to us. So uh, I'm going to share a few things on how to receive the Holy Spirit. Is that okay? This is what it says. Now, now. When they saw this manifestation, people said, we hear them speak the wonderful works of God. Now, there are people that go, man, it's beautiful. And then others said, it's just being, they're just being drunk. 
So understand the move of the Spirit and things of the Spirit have a different, can, people can interpret it differently. And then Peter stands up and he preaches by the Spirit, a sermon he never prepared because the Holy Spirit gave him the right word for the right time. And so he speaks by the Spirit. And then they, it gets to their very heart because it's speaking to their heart. And they say, what must we do? And then Peter says this. This is, this is the what must we do answer. Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins. Now, repenting of sin, now remember, these are devout Jews. So you guys in this room, the process of receiving the Holy Spirit is to repent of your sins. And maybe you have sins, but the, the sin I want to address is the sin of disregarding the power of the Holy Spirit, a religious concept. Again, I grew up with a very kind of scary thing about the Holy Ghost, right? I had to get to a place where I had to change my mind of who he was. And some of you have got to change your mind of who he is. You've kept him at a distance. I want you to embrace him. It says you must repent, change your mind of what the Holy Spirit is, or maybe you came from a situation that he was reduced to something. And there are denominations that, re, that don't accept him at all. So you got to figure out what the word of God says and then change your mind about it according to his word. Not according to me, but according to his word. So he tells them, you want the Holy Spirit? Repent about your processes and how you established your relationship with God based on your religious connection. Okay, repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized. Now, remember, these are people of the law. He's saying, I want you to be baptized in Jesus. So now everything about my life will be baptized in Jesus. There's come the time that each one of us say, okay, I'm a, this is it. I'm in. I'm, 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 I'm just going to be in. If I'm going to be in on anything, I'm going to be in on Jesus. When I was 13 years old, I've been in church all my life. Don't get me wrong. But at 13, I, I made my commitment to Jesus. I said, I'm following you, Lord Jesus. And I said, Lord, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm all in with you, so I'm not going to borrow Aunt Susie's Bible or pick up a Bible that someone left at church and call it mine. I'm going to save my money and buy my own Bible. So I saved my money because I thought if I put my money into it, then I'm really serious. <laughs> so I, I, I went to the store and I bought a red King James Bible. Red letter edition, it was red. I figured red for the blood. I don't, I don't know. I was red. So, and then I started with Matthew, which was really the dumbest thing in the world because the begats almost stopped me in my tracks. Begat this, <laughs> begat that. But I got through it. So the idea is that I invested. I'm changing my mind. I'm investing. I'm going to be baptized. I'm, I'm making every step that I'm aware of to be in Jesus. So I repent of my sins, and I'm choosing to be baptized in Jesus I'm leaving everything aside. Like, remember these devout Jews who say, I'm putting away Moses. I'm accepting Jesus. Y'all, this is a big step for these Jews. So be baptized in Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and the forgiveness of your sins. So now your sin, the thing that keeps popping up, your, your, your failure point, that you're no longer identified by that. No longer allowed to be a victim by that. Everything's put aside. I'm baptized in Christ. I'm a new creature. I'm not identified by my failure points any longer. So sin's taken care of. That then you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift. Then you're able to receive it. It's not going to be forced on you. You receive it if you want it. And if you're not sure you want it, no big deal. Keep drawing near to him, and he'll take care of the rest. There is no benchmark of achievement. Hey, you receive the Holy Spirit, now you're spiritual. No, no, no. You receive him, and it's a gift. In verse 39, it says, for the promise, this promise of the gift is for you and your children and for all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call to himself. So there are some denominations that say, well, it stopped back then. Well, Peter just finished saying, it's for your children and their children and everyone else that would come to know him. You know, that's for everybody. This gift is for anyone. Whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord has the opportunity to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Your prayer language. Praise God. What do you think, church? And in 1 Corinthians 14.2, 14, it says, For he who speaks in tongues does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. And in verse 14, um, it talks about it edifies himself. It builds you up. The enemy is trying to tear you down. The Holy Spirit, when you begin to pray in your prayer language, it builds you up. It gives you wisdom. It gives you impact. It, it aligns you with the will of God. Whoo! I'm good. What are you good with that? I'm good with that. Amen, church. 
Now, we believe in this church that we, we, that we believe in things of spirit. Now, we're not identified with tongues, but for some reason, that's the one that we focus in on. All I'm saying, understanding the function of the gifts of the spirit, the praying in tongues, is better than making it an event. It was never meant to be an event. It was meant to be a gift for you. What do you think, church? And there are different ways of receiving it. I just explained how we receive it. People laid, laid hands on people and they received it, or, or people just received it by the Holy Spirit falling upon them. And I, I'd rather go that way today. This is where coronavirus works for us. <laughs> the Spirit of God, you and Spirit of God. So here's the thing. I want us all to stand. Now, the Bible says that we shouldn't speak in tongues unless there's an interpreter. I'm, I'm a, we're going to pray in the Spirit right now. Okay, we're going to give honor to the Lord. And every time we do pray in the Spirit, we're just giving honor to the Lord. I want us to pray in the Spirit for those that have the ability. We're going to pray in the Spirit. And this is what I want you to understand. We can pray in the Spirit. I, I will Pray in the spirit. I will pray with the understanding. I have complete control. I don't go into a, tra- a, a you know, kind of a trance. I don't go into weird. No, that, that's, no, you have complete control. And I want us all, if you want to receive the Holy Spirit, you're going to hear someone next to you praying in tongues. And you may go, well, that's just me. Yes, it is you. When you pray, you align yourself with God and you begin to open your mouth and it's going to sound like gibberish. Absolutely. It's spirit. You're not going to understand it by the natural. That's, that's the truth. Uh, yeah, that's right. So, so the idea is to open and avail yourself. And if you're seeking him, this is a part of who he is. So I want us all just begin to pray in the spirit right now. Let's all just begin to pray. Come on, let it be heard. Yes, we're praying in tongues right now. God, you're so good. You're amazing, Lord. Now, if you want to receive the Holy Spirit, just begin to pray in tongues right now. Just lift your voice. Between you and Jesus. And it may be a syllable. It may be a, a phrase. But you are going to receive something from the Lord. And we thank you right now, God. We love you, Lord. We bless your holy name. We magnify you and praise you in the Spirit. And I will pray in the spirit, and I'll pray with the understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Everyone, amen. Let's just stop for a moment. And I want you to see we started by the spirit. We started in our, in our will, and it, we are in control. We stopped. He's not going to, like, run over you. He's a gentleman. But this wonderful gift of, of seeing things being given to you by the spirit, y'all, you need to lean in if you haven't leaned in. And if today you spoke in tongues, great. It's not your identifier. It's a gift of grace. And he works for you. Amen. Y'all may be seated. We've decided to take communion every time we get together. Because we believe that there's a power in healing. And we need to be healed in Jesus' name of everything from coronavirus to common cold to cancer. We find healing in Jesus' name. Amen, church. So if you have, don't have your communion elements, you can lift up your hand, and uh, we'll get you one real quick. The ushers will get one to you. Oh, by the way, just real quick, I'm wearing these different T-shirts because we have, we have a T-shirt thing this month. Everyone's got different T-shirts that, that are serving you, and uh, it's the coolest thing in the world. Next, uh, It's just fun to have a T-shirt. I'm doing production today. Yay, production team. Yeah, there we go. So I want to tell you, next week, a good friend of mine, Alvin Fruget, will be with us. Uh, he's a brother in Owasso. And he'll be talking about being free from culture pressure. And he's a black brother, good dear friend. He used to uh, be the music guy for Higher Dimensions back in the day. Incredible musician, incredible singer. And he'll be sharing. We've been talking and just kind of how to navigate through this whole thing that we're going through in this culture challenge. You, want, you don't want to miss next week. Alvin is amazing. A good brother. He may sing for us. He's just an amazing guy. But uh, if everyone's got your bread, if you lift the bread to the Lord... Now, Father, we come before you, and we thank you for the gift of your Son. We thank you, God, that he bore stripes on his back. We thank you, Lord, that he took our diseases from us, that we could be free. And right now, we do this in remembrance. You told us to do this in remembrance of you because we so easily forget. We get distracted with the cares of the world, and we forget who we're connected to. So right now, God, we remind ourselves that you paid a price for our healing. And so as we take this bread, we remind ourselves, and our body comes alive in healing in the name of Jesus. Everyone, let's take together. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. 
And God, we lift the cup to you right now. Lord, you took the bitter cup of our sin and anguish and poured in the cup of righteousness in our heart that we could be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We could be heirs to the kingdom, not just slaves or servants, but God heirs. You took everything that was ugly about us and poured everything that was beautiful about you, God, and we're so grateful. And we do this in remembrance of your redemption, even though the enemy would want to remind us of our sin. We thank you, God. We magnify our redemption because that's what you did. So this cup we take now and we thank you. Let's all take together. Let's just lift our hands to the Lord and begin to praise him. God, you're so good. We thank you, God, that we do surrender all. We're led by your spirit. We thank you, God, that you're in control of our lives. And we speak your realities in Jesus' name. We love you. Amen.